Hey everybody, welcome to Nation. Today we are going to be talking about how I almost destroyed my business. And we're going to talk about three things that you can maybe take away from it. So stay tuned to WCR Nation. Well, I'm Jersey from Window Cleaning Resource and you are here. Uh, what's going on? Thanks for tuning in. If it's your first time, take a look around. Hopefully you love it. If you're here and you've been here multiple times, you're part of the nation, one of the cool kids, what's going on? It is because of you that I get to do what I get to do. Those are people who watch and comment and make sure to buy your supplies through me at Window Cleaning Resource. My number 862-312-2026. Please buy it from me. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, uh, we have a couple quick shout outs to do. Um, by the way, new format a little bit. Uh, trying to speed things up here in the beginning. But uh, Sean, um, what's going on? Uh, Sean Planis, uh, Craig Hauser, Jacob Von Steen, and Zach. What's going on, guys? Uh, the winner of this week's, uh, last week's contest, I guess, is going to be Ryan Johnson, the window cleaning ninja. What's up, man? You finally won. All you got to do is email me your info, josh at windowcleaningresource.com. And if you want to win, just comment on YouTube. If you're listening to this on a iTunes or SoundCloud, comment on YouTube. Make sure to like it, thumbs up, all that good stuff, and that would be amazing. But anyway... So today we're going to be talking about how I almost destroyed my business. Now, a little bit of back kind of story on me. Uh, I've owned a window cleaning business now, two different locations. I've owned it for 13-ish years, something like that. Uh, not forever, but long enough to know a thing or two and kind of experience a thing or two. And uh, one of the biggest things that I did to almost destroy my business... Uh, happened years ago when I was still still new it was three years into it something like that and I learned a lot from it a ton of it I, I really really did learn a lot from it um, hopefully you can pick out a couple of things we're going to talk about three things that I learned from it and uh, yeah so when my business was about two and a half years old somewhere in there uh, I was making cold calls just driving down the highway, and I actually called a company that did um, deliveries, basically. Uh, no, it's not one that you think of, but they have semis there, that type of bigger deliveries. And I called, and I said, hey, I, um, I want to do your windows. Can I get you a quote? I have asked and called a couple times ago. I said, I want to do your window cleaning. Can I give you a, guys a quote? I'd love the opportunity to kind of show you pricing and what we can offer. Uh, I'd also be able to give you a quote on fleet cleaning because when I drove by, there's tons of semis. And I just threw it out there. Just thought, well, what the heck? I just learned about fleet cleaning right before that. Well, they said, no, you know, our janitors do the window cleaning, which we later found out that they didn't. But they said, oh, we'd like a demo on the fleet cleaning, actually. We're looking at switching people. And I went, oh, great. Oh, a demo. Uh, yeah, when do you want this demo? And he said, how about next Thursday? Now, mind you, it was Friday. So about a week, less than a week to get everything figured out in a service I didn't offer or have the equipment for. So um, I went out. I got all the equipment I needed. I went to a place that I found. It was about 45 minutes from my house. And I said, listen. I have 10 grand to spend, build the system, get it in. I need it out the door by Thursday, Wednesday night, so that I can do this. He goes, okay, well, what truck are you putting on? What trailer? I said, I don't, know, I don't own the truck yet. <laughs> I got to go out and buy this real quick. He goes, okay, well, we'll order all the stuff, and uh, when you get the truck, bring it in. Went out that weekend, bought the truck that weekend. Got in, got everything installed. It ran long, and uh, it was actually not done until Thursday afternoon, and I called them up. I said, hey, uh, I know you guys were looking for that demo today. Is there any chance we can get out there tomorrow for you? We're running a little bit behind here. He said, yeah, absolutely. Come on out. So if you know anything about demos, it's the time where they're watching. You do what you do. They see the before, the after, and the process. And they go, wow, what you just did was amazing. We want to do it. Now, mind you, I'm about 15 grand into the whole whole situation really i got the truck i got the equipment i have zero work for this that i just bought 
So I go there, do the demo. The guy's smoking, standing there talking with another dude. Not once did he look at me. Whole thing's done. I said, yeah, great. How do we do? It's perfect. You got the job. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, here's, you want to know the numbers? He goes, no, I'll tell you what we paid before if you're just close and we're good. Okay. Well, at that time I was like, okay, this is crazy. It was a twice a week fleet job and this giant fleet, it was its own crew of people that they just did that two days a week. Um, and then we ended up picking up a couple other fleets that you may think that that was the reason I almost destroyed my business by trying to buy equipment for a job I didn't have. But no, you would be wrong. Uh, that was a gamble. It was a super sketchy, sketchy gamble that uh, I probably shouldn't have done, but I did, and it worked out quite well. Actually, that that one fleet was the largest single uh, uh, job I've I've ever had for my company. Anyway, I digress. So now I got this equipment and this giant thing that my family deemed the chicken truck because it was one of those NPR like cab over things. Had all the equipment on there. Thing broke down a lot. It was not made for the water we're putting in there. Not made for any of that. So we ended up within a month or so selling that truck and buying an F550 with a nice giant galvanized bed. Super nice truck. Swapped everything over, fork trucks, did the whole thing. Now I got this big truck. The thing was 27 feet long, this truck was. Now, I don't like trailers. Uh, let me rephrase that. I don't like big trailers. Little trailers, I use those on my normal day-to-day. -day. But the big stuff in truck lots, I thought, man, it would just be better to have this. But now what am I going to do with this giant truck? So we had RV parking, RV storage, if you will. We went to a place and said, hey, I got this giant truck that I want to store somewhere. Can we do that? And they said, yeah, no problem. Of course, of course. You need heated storage? I said, no, you have power. I'll just run a little space heater out there. Well, we had that for a couple months and I was paying $550 a month for that one storage for one vehicle. Now the account was amazing. Like I didn't have to worry about, you know, number wise. <sighs> But I said, hey, well, what if I had that and then my window cleaning division, like everything could be merged into one. I want to buy a business, a, a, a building. I want to have a location and I want it to have this and this and this and this. I can pull a truck and blah, blah, blah. Well, we get to looking. Now, mind you, three years in business, we get to look and we find a place that's awesome. I still own it today. It's a great, 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 uh, just worked out perfectly for what we needed. it. But I ran all the numbers on this thing and I went, man, this is... It's more, but it would really be valuable to have because then I can have office staff going there instead of here. We don't have to have cars parking in front of my house and my neighbors hitting me and this whole thing. I thought, man, this would be sweet to have this thing. We, we all dream about it, right? Like if you don't have a place, it'd be kind of cool, right? Think about it. It would be awesome for you to have your own place to go to um, where you have offices, you could have it set up your own way. You could do whatever you want there because it's the business, right? So it's a little bit blinded, but I put it all together. I worked out the numbers and went, I can do this. I can do this. It was going to be X amount. Uh, see from what that one storage was, it was going to be about double what I assumed It'd be about thousand dollars. So, well, that's not bad, right? $1,000 just adds to that amount that I'm already paying, but that's $250 a week. It's not terrible, right? Not terrible. Well, man, oh man, oh man, did I mess up my calculations. Now, when I went to the bank, I said, hey, I have this building. It's perfect. I have it. I want it for my business. My business is doing great. We're newer, but yet we have all this stuff. Like I just... It would be perfect. I've not found one. We looked for actually quite a while. Because uh, I was even looking before that just to like, you know, see what was out there. Man, this, this, this place would be cool. I want this place. And I went to the bank and they went, oh, yeah. So how much is the loan for this building? And I threw out, told them the number. They went, oh, hmm, okay. Uh, give me all your paperwork. I got everything together. Biggest decision of my life, right? Put everything out there. Convince the wife that this is the best thing to do. And uh, gave it to the banker, who is a commercial banker. Now, the commercial banker, they're used to doing like somebody phoning in like, uh, yeah, I need uh, $2 million for this. And they're like, it's no big deal at $2 million. 
I was going in for next to nothing from what they had. And my company was a next to nothing company. So uh, I hadn't heard anything for like a week. I'm like, man, I know it's going to take a little bit longer, but a week's a little bit long. I got to call this guy. So I call him up. I say, hey, I am wondering about this loan. Here's my name. Here's what I'm getting. I'm pretty excited about it, and I just kind of want to chase it. I don't, I don't mean to bug you, but I want to know. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, we denied that. Uh, nobody told me. <laughs> it's, oh, well, uh, loans of that size, we normally don't... Uh, we don't uh, make contact, you know, just basically telling me I'm worthless, telling me that what I wanted, right? My dream, the thing that I wanted didn't matter. It didn't matter to them. Well, that's what I focused on. I didn't focus on the fact that I got denied, which means that my income for the business didn't justify buying the building, but I didn't see that, right? I just saw like, Oh, this guy, man, I'm just not big enough of a fish. I'm big enough of a fish. I say, hey, did you take into account this contract that we got? This one contract is more than enough to, I mean, that's like nothing for for this contract. The guy goes, oh, no, I didn't know you had that contract. We just looked at your previous numbers. So bring over the stuff. Brought it all over. Literally looks at it. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, you should be good. That was it. That was the approval for a building. A building. It's like, God, man. First off, that puts you in perspective. It shows you that you're just a no one <laughs> in some of these bankers' eyes. Uh, go in like a sales group sometime or like look at these guys who are, there's guys out there, salespeople, who are doing uh, $300,000 in like uh, home sales, you know, like not home sales, but um, like remodels and things. That's that's what the guys are bringing home. That's their commission on what they sold. There's We're such a, a farce in all of this. But... I get this loan. I go, wow, man, this is awesome. I jump through all the hoops. We go to this place. You know, we've been going back and forth. And the guy, the, the place is just, inside was a woodworking place. There's a pile of sawdust that's as tall as me in the middle of this thing. Which, by the way, under that was a drain, which was great because uh, I could wash trucks inside. Didn't even know it was there. Bunch of tools, everything. The guy, I said to the guy, I said, I'll pay you this amount. I shot him a number. And, uh... I said, uh, I want everything inside. Just leave it all in there. You don't have to clean it up, and I'll go through. Hopefully find some cool tools. The guy said, nah, uh, nah I'm not interested. I, just, I want full price. Like, oh, well, that, that that didn't work. This is before I'm getting all this loan stuff put all together. That gets approved. I get shot back down in this place that I'm just, just madly in love with. All of a sudden, like the next day, my realtor calls me, and she says, uh, hey, uh, I told him, yeah, you're just like a, a little guy starting up. And he's like, thought about it. He goes, yeah, I really like this guy, you know, story. And yeah, maybe I just don't want to sit in this thing. Yeah, you can, you can go ahead. So the guy, again, in just a, you're nothing to me. It's like, yeah, sure. Yeah, you know what? I second thought. And this was about $50,000 difference from what the guy wanted and what I offered. And he's like, yeah, no worries. Sweet. Everything's falling together. I get this property. Right, I go through all the headaches, all the you know the process, the the uh, getting the water set up, getting the um, occupancy permit, and the inspections, and the blah 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 blah. Well, when all this is going on, all the money that I'm spending to put all this stuff into place, the inspection and the, I mean, just to get electric and gas hooked up, was like fifteen hundred dollars down payment for them just to turn it on. And not to mention my first heating bill. This is Wisconsin. My first heating bill was $680 for November. Like, I realized real quickly this thing was not insulated very well and uh, so much money. So I'm bleeding money. I'm bleeding money. These numbers that I thought of were in my brain. I'm like, yeah, it's like X amount per month. I can do that easy. I didn't think of all the incidentals. I had to then hook up on top of the electric gas, blah, 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 inspections, all that stuff. I had to get fire extinguishers for the building. I had to get dumpster for the building because it didn't have garbage service. I needed internet, Wi-Fi, phone. I needed to outfit each office with a desk. There was no desks. I needed to have desks, computers. I needed computers in there. Now, mind you, I slowly did it. So I had uh, one desk that was actually left. It was like one of those old metal style, like, just crazy uh, school-style desk. I used that for a while until I kind of re, uh, 
re kind of built up my nest egg. All this stuff happened, and literally by the time we moved in, it was winter. So, <laughs> PTSD is coming back on this whole thing. But in winter time, in our business, we're not cash rich. So the nesting that not only did I save for winter is gone, but I'm not making money in the winter. Not happening. So all of a sudden, I got this bill. I have all of these bills. I have no nest egg. And I have a business and a building. The business isn't creating any money right now because it's slow winter. Of course, there was no snow that year. Not a lot. And, uh, yeah, so now I'm sitting there. It's January. I have a 20-year mortgage on this business, uh, the building, that I'm not making enough money to even, like, pay for right now. It was just, it was one of the worst kind of sets of, like, sitting and just looking at dire He's looking at the situation saying, man, I was so happy yesterday and everything just fell by my own bad decision. Super, super, super quick. But I had a place for the truck. I had a place for staff to show up. I had a place for storage of all my screen stuff. I had a screening table and I had my ladders and I, the place was perfect. I just didn't have the work to support it. My nest egg was gone. Some panic sets in. Like you're just, to understand that is your first year look back and see how you made it through that winter. The first guy just posted on Facebook, it's his first year. He's like, hey, it's winter. I didn't plan for winter enough. I don't have the money. I'm, I'm, I'm going crazy right now where I can't get the income. You can't make money come out of the, the thin air. You just can't. So now you're sitting there. You got nothing. But bills and debt. And you're like, well, what the heck? Like, what do I do? Like, where do I go from here? That's what I did. Now, that particular year, I straggled through that year. And actually, what happened was um, I picked up uh, some snow work through another company. And that kind of gave me an influx of uh, some money. Because even when we didn't have snow, I could throw the truck over there and do salting and everything else in these monstrous accounts. So I got some kind of money. I didn't eat any kind of good food. or I mean, I was eating ramen. You know, my family, my wife is freaking out. Like, it just, it was, it was sucky. But springtime came. And that spring was one of the best springs we've ever had. Up to that point was the best months we've ever had in that time. But when that light switch happened, man, I'm telling you what, I did everything in my power to build myself back up. It was super hard. It really, really was. And I'm not telling you this to be like, yeah, go out there. But I'm telling you that this kind of stuff happens and you can destroy a business overnight if you do the wrong things. So with that, that whole kind of process, everything that happened, what do I do? Like, what, what, what do you pull from that? How do you learn? They say that a mistake is only a mistake if you didn't learn from it. If you learn from it, it's a lesson. Now, that's cool. Now, think about that. If you have a lesson, anything that you do in your business, your life, your whatever, and you jack something up, you smash a window, you dent a Porsche at a car dealership, right? Anything that you do, now's the time to learn from what you did. Don't do it again. You know, fool me once, shame on me, fool me twice. No, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me, right? Anybody can learn a lesson. Lessons suck. They're hard. They hurt. But when you learn a lesson, it makes you stronger. What are the things that I can kind of pull out of that? Well, first off, you can grow too fast. 100%, we've talked about that before. You can grow too fast. This is one of the ways. If you go and get equipment to make the money, awesome. If you go and get stuff that doesn't make you anything, like a business or a building, like a uh, 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 a type of office staff, like a a, a office goddess, right? I always talk about how awesome, awesome, favorite employee. But if you get this stuff before you're ready, you will lose. If you get this stuff, before you are able to sustain or before it's time, you'll lose. It's the same thing with right now. Say you have, it's you and a helper, right? Again, 
I'm just some guy with a mic that you can't see anymore because I changed up the stand that's on. But um, if you have a business and you're you're by yourself or you're pretty booked or something and you get a contract that is $2 million, 17 building contract and you're a owner operator or a guy with a helper, you can't handle that job. You're looking at it just like I did of looking at like, ah, uh, you, you don't care about me because I'm small. Not the, you are denying me because I'm not able to afford this, but you're looking at the money and say, man, this is like millions of dollars. Just think of that millions of dollars on top of that. If I work margins, right, I'm looking at 30, 40% profit. It's a $3 million contract on those buildings. I'm running a million dollar potential profit. That's what you're focused on, you will lose because you will not be able to hold that contract. In that contract, there's stipulations that say now you owe them money or you lose money on the job or you just can't fulfill it and you lose the contract, which you've gotten all the resources now to be able to do that. You'll lose all of that. Growing needs to be at a slope that you can climb, right? If you put a straight line, you take wood and you build a slope, but somebody can walk up that, That's the way you go. If you build it too steep, if you make it just like one of those really, really tight roofs and you can't walk it, you can't make it up that slope. You will fall back down. That's growth. Uh, Growth can be done the right way, but it takes a ton of smarts. It takes a lot of assets. It takes the capital, uh, the surrounding yourself. It can be done fast and accelerated, but don't push the button. Don't, Don't push yourself to be bigger and better than you are able to be at that time. Think about that. The same thing, you're an owner-operator. Instead of picking up a $3 million job that crushes you, you pick up a $30,000 job that you can actually do on your own. You can do it. That's your growth. That's the step that you're taking. That is building a ramp that you can still walk up. It's not going crazy and destroying yourself. When you lose sight of how you're going to get somewhere, we talk about planning and all that stuff, you're going to lose sight of how you can get there and how you can get there, not how the next guy gets there. When you lose sight of that, you lose sight of how you grow. You lose sight of health in your business. You lose sight of all that because the dollar signs come up or the grandiose of, of uh, you know, the ideas of being amazing. You know, that will blind you every single time. And that's what's tough because you always see the next guy and you always see how better and good and man, oh man, when I get this building, I want to talk to people about how things going. Oh good, yeah, I know, we just bought our location, just bought our shop, right? You're on cloud nine, but you don't understand the ramifications, the other side of it. So growing too fast, that's huge. That's lesson number uno. You can destroy something super, super fast. Now, if you say, oh, I don't, I, I couldn't, I couldn't destroy what I got right now. I'm running too strong. Look at this. Look at Kodak. They're still around. They're not who they were. Look at a Radio Shack, a Blockbuster, you know, Saturn car company, you know, like Pontiac, all, all the things that were like huge staples that just one day were like, it's not happening anymore. I know bad decisions, Blockbuster. I worked at a Blockbuster Back when DVDs were starting to come out and Blockbuster was like, nah, I don't think it'll catch on. Yeah, they, they lost, <laughs> right? They made a dumb decision. And yes, they were used to working at Blockbuster. My kids don't even know what a Blockbuster is and I used to work at one, right? Cool. Daddy, did you ride dinosaurs when you were? Shut up. That's not the thing. So, <laughs> yes, a big thing can fall. And when it falls, it falls so much harder. They say the bigger you are, the harder you fall. That is absolutely true. Because the bigger you are, the bigger you are, the faster you fall to the ground. So you have to build it up straight. If you build a pyramid, why are the pyramids still existing? Because the base of it is so wide. It's so heavy duty for what's on top. You build a a leaning tower of Pisa where you sped things up and didn't do it right. And now your foundation is garbage. Your tower is going to fall over, right? Anyway, the, the Leaning Tower of Pisa is completely empty inside. They had to remove everything. Just a fun little bit of information. 
But that's what we're talking about. That's that's one of the biggest lessons. Now, take it as a grain of salt, I guess. See, maybe you could use it in your day. Maybe you can't. I don't know. But lesson number two that I learned from that is keeping costs under control. Your costs, there's a lot of things that we pay for. A lot of things. Look at your bank account. Whenever you get, man, everybody's like, oh, man. Like your employees are always like, man, you just got a $3,000 check. Must be nice. Oh, that's neat because I had $2,900 worth of bills that need to get paid out of that check. Like you made more than I did on that job. Right? That happens. There's a lot of things we have to pay for. There's a lot of things that you do not need now. Let that sink in. There's a lot of things you do not need now. Now, I'm not talking about equipment. Now's the time a lot of people are investing in in new equipment. That's not what I'm talking about. That equipment makes you money. Having new staff and techs to go out and do that, they make you money. But the stuff that doesn't make you money. Oh man, I need that new that new fancy chair in my in my my office. It doesn't make you money. Well, yeah, but I deserve it. Yeah, but what else could you do with that three four hundred dollars? Nothing right now, man. I'm cash rich says the window cleaner in spring or fall. But what about winter? Those are things that you have like, think about. If you don't need something, now may not be the time to have that. You always look at the guy next to you. This is the worst thing about Facebook is everything on Facebook is the positives of someone's life. No one has irritable bowel (laughs) and posts that on Facebook. Nobody has the flu you know, and posts the entire day live of them sleeping in bed dying. Nobody posts about, you know, hey, here's a video of me and my wife fighting. Ah, here's some pictures of, of, of me putting my dog down, right? That stuff may come in and sprinkle in as overpasses. The same thing as when you'd say, hey, how was your day? Everybody's like, ah, good. No, it wasn't. Not everybody. But that's what you see is all the positives. This is the same thing on forum and Facebook groups and all these other things. You're only looking at people's positives. You're only looking at the great things. You're not looking at the struggles that each of these people have to do to get to that. It's the iceberg. How much of it is under the water? Because you're seeing only the tip. But a lot of people compare themselves to the Joneses when it comes to business. And this is what happens. Number three. The third, I guess, lesson that I learned from it is that the more money you spend that eats profit, it eats what you can reinvest in yourself. Now, all that money I spent, I put 20% down on a building. I put $1,500 down to nothing. I just, I got it a year later or two years later. I don't know. I got it back. Like eventually I called them and was like, hey, do I get my down payment back? They're like, oh yeah, like two months ago you should have got it. And I didn't. Oh, we'll send you a check now. Okay, neat. But like all of that working capital, I lost for having fire extinguishers put in my building, for making the back stairs up to code, to everything, everything that I could possibly do, rekeying it, getting, I had to get all new handles, like little stupid things. But by the time everything was said and done, it was tens and tens of thousands of dollars where my winter nest egg just disappeared. That was tens of thousands of dollars that I did not get to make into selling that spring. It was the best month, uh, the best spring up until that point, and I didn't get to advertise. Think of where I'd been, or where I'd be, or where my company would be, or anything, if I was able to reinvest that money. If you lose the money, you lose the equity, not only do you not have the nest egg, which I want a nest egg, but you lose the opportunity to reinvest that money back into your company. There's a lot of times where reinvestment will pay you over and over and over. It's like it, it's like buying stock, but in yourself, right? But if you don't have the money to buy the stock, you're not rich. Who would have bought Apple stock knowing what they know now? How much money would you have if you were able to invest it then? Now, so something to think about. Those are the three lessons I learned from it. I'm just some guy with a mic and a computer who happens to sell window cleaning supplies. Huh? Um, but yeah, maybe you'll get something from it. Maybe you won't, but I'm trying to change up the format a little bit. No one, oh, there's a couple people I lie. There's a lot of you, a handful of you that are giving me show ideas. It's awesome. High five. 
Uh, this show, uh, Seth, and actually Michael Mole, if you guys remember him, uh, were guys we were talking about it. We're just trying to change things up. I want to do more stories with you guys. I want to kind of give you a little bit more feel on who I am and what we do. And I want to talk more about that and experiences, not just the business side of it. But if you have an idea for a podcast, please let me know. Text me, 862-312-2026. That would genuinely be awesome. Even better, you want to buy supplies? I don't care if it's a $200 order or a $200,000 order. Let me order it for you. It costs you nothing more. And it is awesome for me. Literally, it's never, ever, 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 ever an inconvenience. I just, before I started recording as another guy, text me and says, hey, everything's in my cart. Put the order in. That's awesome. That's really how I make my cheddar. So that's why we do what we do. Hopefully, you can help keep spreading this stuff around. If you get a chance to share the content, please do that. It would be amazing if you shared it. Talk about it. Put hashtags out there. Just talk on any social platform. Uh, getting more people to know about the show would genuinely help me out. So genuinely I said that too many times, but I do appreciate it. And the code you're waiting for. If you do order anything through me, you can get 5% off your order by telling me um, uh, Fleet Cleaning. That's this week's order. Let me know Fleet Cleaning. If you did, 5% off your order. Boom. It's just that easy. Call me, text me, smoke signals, whatever. 862-312-2026. And until next time, go out there and be epic.